Gotta get some more Bondo. Oh, look at that. Must have been a chip there, Power Ranger. I got all these little dents. Rivet holes, I got this big old, but I ran out of Bondo. Just trying to get this just knocked down just enough. And I can come back, put this Bondo on from here to here. And you see this is, that's pretty beat, but it uh, looks like somebody might have welded it. Go from there and get some more Bondo on it later. I'm probably gonna need three cans of Bondo to do this whole car. Uh, down here, I'm just using Bondo jelly. This is short hair Bondo strand, short hair Bondo. And up top, I got Bondo jelly, but we'll knock this down a little bit more. be time for another
so I'm trying to use as less of body work Bondo as I can. Cause you don't want to be in here getting dirty as I am right now, taking off too much Bondo. So, start with a big heavy area like this here. That's a big heavy bad area right here. So, what you do is you just go off of eye level as flat to the nearest flat surface. Like this is this is flat here on this corner. Right here is flat on this corner. So from here over, you want to be as flat as you can. Not like this here. See, this is low. This is high. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some more bondo tomorrow. And I'm gonna start working all this right here, getting this almost finished, right? All this is bare metal. Here, I gotta fill this in. All this is bare metal. So, once I do that, I'm gonna put self etching primer over it. And it's gonna look like this, it's gonna get primered. And then I'm gonna put a black base coat. I mean, not base coat, a black guide coat. And it's going to show me where all my real low spots are. But what I'm going to do now, because I went off of this body line, this body line right here, it runs all the way down the car. So what I'm going to do now is go from that body line with thin, brush this out, you know, real good, get that dandruff out of there and go real thin over this stuff right here. Just thin enough that it matches up with this and this body line. So it looks seamless. And I'll get my long block. I'll get my long block with 120 or 220. And I'll sit here and go like this. That way it's a big surface gets all level all at the same time and then after that we just keep sanding it down until we don't see any pits like this and come back with some two-part glazing putty and fill in like these little pinholes like that or something like that and then self-etching primer it again hit it with 320 make it smooth as that bare metal right there make it smooth like butter and then base coat, primer, regular primer. And then go back through with some 320 again after a primer, fill in all the little small imperfections, get all these corners and lines lined up. And then we'll hit it with some primer sealer. So to go self etching primer, body work, guide coat, primer, 320 primer sealer base coat the color of paint you choose i'm going to go arctic white mercedes arctic white and uh the color of paint you choose and then your clear coat which i don't know i gotta find a contact mercedes and see uh how many coats of uh clear you're supposed to put on the arctic white because it's all different they got Chevy white, they got Dodge Challenger white, they got all that shit. But I'm going, see how smooth this is right here? So I bet money says if you had a laser, you could laser this spot right here to this spot right here. And I bet they'd be perfectly even. So then I'll come back with, after I clean these divots out, get all the sand knocked out of them, and then I'll come back with the short hair strand Bondo. Trying to use all the same Bondo, or or I'll probably end up using Bondo Jelly because they can get in these holes a little bit better. And then I'll self etch and primer it. I'll let it set. Then I'll get my long block with sandpaper. Then I'll put a black 
guide coat that's going to show me all my high and low. And then I'll knock that sucker down, make it smooth like butter. Then I'll self-etching primer it again. We'll finish up the little bit of touches here and there. And then we'll primer this sucker. Also working on the top and uh, the door frames. So that's all I'm gonna do. Let's check my Dewalt battery right quick. So both of my batteries are completely dead. So I'm gonna call it. <clears throat> Uh, O'Reilly handy dandy light. So I'll start here. Got a bunch of body work just right here. Keep this line right here, this factory line is what I'm gonna keep. I already got this part right here. I gotta put just a little bit there or sand down around it really. After I primer seal it, primer. After I self etching primer it. Once I self etch and primer it. Uh, at the same time, I got to tie this back end in because it's starting to surface rust pretty good with some self-etching primer. So I'll get that tied in off of these body lines here on the back and this body line here and this body line here and the trunk line here and tie all that together with these body lines that's still here down on these bottoms, filling all this junk. And then right here is where we self-etch and primer this. I haven't hit this with 320. This has all been self-etch and primer. So then I'll come back, self-etch and primer, hit it with 320. Let's see if I need to take it back down to bare metal. Fill it in with some, like right here, got some rivets. Uh, fill it in with some uh, Bondo jelly, like I did here on this. See, this was already... I already Bondo jellied this with short hair strand Bondo and primered over it. So you can see right here where I Bondo went over it with Bondo. I mean, went over it with self edging primer here in the last 30 minutes. So I'll take some flat black. I'll flat black that just in this area. I'll grab this uh, 220, 320. I'll probably just use 320 throughout this whole thing. That way I got a sharp, sharper look on it. So it'll all be sharper and get rid of this stuff here because it'll show my high and lows and tie this in. Let me see here. Where am I? Where my uh, big block is right here, my long block. So you gotta have this long block for areas like this here to tie all this in right here and get it all smoothed out. Like that. And the same thing for this spot here. So for this spot here, what I'll do on this one, this just got through finishing, finished self etching primer. This, so I still got my rag wet with alcohol. Clean this spot. I'll take this. Uh, this black guide coat here. Try and do this pretty much with one hand. Just broke my damn. Just broke my damn paintball. Oh no, this goes back in here. I don't know. I'm new to this stuff. New to it. So you don't really want to put a a lot of black paint on it. Just want to see like that. You just want to. You just want to barely. Barely hit it with some, some black guide coat on here to just like that right there. You let that dry. Let that dry right there. And uh, same for this up front. I just primered, self etching primered all this right here where I did all that body work. So we can do the same thing for this right now. Right here. Clean this off right quick. Just a little bit, you can see here. All these high and lows already. This one here is okay. 
this spot here. I just wanted to save my primer on this spot. I can hit this with, uh, I can hit that with uh, that whatchamacallit here, the 320. I think I gotta get some 320. But what I'm looking for is my bottle of alcohol. So self etching primer, Rust-Oleum in a can, 320. Bondo jelly. This is a super budget build, man. That's a freaking super budget. All right, so check this out. So this is Bondo jelly, right? Bondo jelly resin. All right, so this thing's already been self etching primer with short hair Bondo underneath it right here. So this is 91 alcohol. So we're gonna hit this whole area right here. Knock all this off here. Got my long block handy. I think this has got 120 on it. Yeah, that's got 120 on it right there. You gotta have that long block for doing big spaces. And now, I'll let that alcohol dry. At 91% alcohol. Hold on, here we go. And we just wanna. Now that, see that, that light black, you can still see the paint and everything. That's called a guide coat. So we'll let this dry overnight and come back tomorrow night and then work on these other spots like this one here. I gotta get this one knocked down, but come back later. See, ain't got no floor pans in here. I'm eventually gonna do a custom floor pan with a back seat delete. So I'll be putting all my speakers in the back seat and a two-seater. So, <clears throat> there's the new hood. It's gonna have Dodge Challenger hood scoops on it. This is the Chucky. So, let me show you guys this right here. I already got my design, my design drawn up where I'm gonna put Chucky at. He's gonna be like running around the car with footprints. Uh, everything is shaved on this, shaved door handles, shaved trunk. This is Bondo Jelly here. See, like this, I put just too much on this right here, which that's okay. We're gonna let that dry overnight because see the color of it, you definitely wanna have a lot of hardener in it. Self-edging primer by Rust-Oleum Bondo Jelly. Uh, let's see here, I'm just seeing it. Just seen it. Anyway, Bondo jelly. We got some car paste, whatever that says. 91% isopropyl. We got some Bondo fiberglass resin jelly. I bought last year. Uh, bought this this year. Bought that this year. I've had this going on about three years now. It's got 120 on it. Batteries went dead on my 12 volt Dewalt. Uh, doing all that with these uh, anywhere from three inch to three inch to six inch with 220 320 or 80 and 150 as you can see this is still all bare metal about to start getting up in there with some primer sealer seam sealer primer sealer knocking all this sharp metal down got some heavy duty body work to do right here tying all this in and start moving right here's where i need to be at knocking all this down and gonna do the uh the firewall black and white checkerboard ac box if i get one it's gonna be black and white checkerboard uh firewall is gonna be black and white checkerboard so i'm gonna hopefully have the drive tranny the tranny area 
squared off. Uh, I'm gonna get my dash fitted in here. So I'm gonna have them go off of my dash and square my trans um, tunnel. I'm gonna have them square it off and then drop it down, square it off. So everything's gonna be flat and square in here. Uh, a couple of stock rails as my, be cutting that out right there. Everything's gonna be stock rail in the back. Uh, it's gonna drop down about four inches, flush out over the top of my cross member, which is right there. And then I'm gonna build the trans tunnel a little bit higher and square than normal trans uh, tunnels to fit with my the bottom of my AC vent to where my shifter is going to be uh, more convenient. So have a lot of rust. That's a big issue here on the inside of this where it got rained on and rusted. As you see, this is a complete rust hole right here. So that is a complete rust hole. So all this stuff is gonna have to be fine. Seam sealer, I plan on doing an e-brake relocation. Moving my e-brake over to right here where my shifter is gonna be setting higher than normal and everything's gonna be boxed in. Uh, using, going off of the seats, going off of my Chevy Trailblazer my Chevy Trailblazer SS seats up there, not the teacher's chairs or the school chairs, but the wrapped in plastic black and white Chevy Trailblazer SS electric seats. So going off of that as a guide for this larger transmission tunnel, it's going to come up to about right here, narrow square to fit the fit the shifter about right should be about right there and it's going to be squared and it's going to be a tighter tighter looking situation i got the plans drawn out so uh i said it takes money this is a one man super budget build other than the people that will be building the floor pans fixing the cross member i mean the uh, cradle where the cradle has been cut and reinforcing the cradle and uh, doing the white gloss on the frame. I'm going to install the 10 to 12 inch uh, universal car lift. I'm going to install the Chevy um, spindles, drop spindles, or the she uh, Chevy extended spindles, all this here gonna lift it up about 12 10 and a half 12 inches to where my tires are sitting completely under the car and uh, extending the drive shaft posi tracking it doing all that so uh stay tuned on the build on the 1988 true monte carlo ss and how you know guys out there if you got a real ss the eighth number on the VIN will be G. So anyways, what the hell is that?